All right, so we've finally finished setting up our work environment and we are ready to get down to business. First, I would like to direct your attention to the top left portion of the 3D view here. Whenever I press a keyboard button such as space or T to bring up my tool shelf, or if I click a button on my mouse such as the middle mouse button or the left mouse click or right mouse click, you will see up in this corner the buttons that I have pressed. These buttons won't be displayed in every single video tutorial in the series, but most of the time you'll notice up in this corner that they are. So if you ever feel like a video is going too fast or, or maybe you missed something or you weren't quite sure what I said, you can always pause, slow down, or rewind the video and take another look at what button was pressed if you get confused. So to move around efficiently in Blender, you're going to need one of two devices. So I'm going to come up here where it says File, and under Sensei Format, I'm going to click View Manual. And this will take you to a page where you can download the Sensei Format user manual or just browse it online. That link in Blender is useful too because this will always take you to the latest version of the manual. Okay, so if I click on here down to page three, first we've got some information that might be useful to people who are already used to using Blender. And then over on the right side of this page, you'll notice a list of items that you need. And one of those items that you really need is a three button mouse. A three button mouse is really the most common mouse type that you'll find. It's just a simple left mouse button, right mouse button, and the standard scroll wheel, which is the middle button. If you don't have a three button mouse, I highly recommend getting one. You can find them for as cheap as $5 brand new off of amazon.com. Or if you don't buy things online, find a way to get to a Goodwill. They're loaded with them. You can find one for two or three bucks. It is possible to use Blender without a three button mouse, but the amount of efficiency you will lose is through the roof. So it's really pointless not to use a three button mouse and it's highly recommended for this tutorial series. That is unless you have a drawing tablet, which is not required for the series, but it's definitely recommended. And in the next video, we'll go over setting up your tablet to work with Blender and specifically to take advantage of some Sensei format features as well. I actually recommend using both a three button mouse and a tablet if you have one, because there are times where you can work way more efficiently with a three button mouse as opposed to a drawing tablet. However, I know some people who use nothing but their Wacom tablet for everything. And I commend these people because somehow they find a way to be super efficient to use it even as like a regular mouse. I'm not that way. I like having a mouse available for more design oriented work and I like using the drawing tablet for things like sculpting and painting. However, the drawing tablet is optional for the course. The three button mouse is definitely something you're gonna wanna get if you plan on using Blender very much. Okay, so we're done with this. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it. And back in Blender, let's talk about the three basic ways to navigate your 3D environment. And really that's all there is. It's just three things that you commonly do to move around. So the first way we move around is by holding down our middle mouse button on the mouse and then moving the mouse. And this lets us rotate around whatever object we have selected. So right now we have this cube selected and you can tell it's selected because it is highlighted in orange. So when we hold middle mouse button down and rotate, we are rotating around that selection. But if I were to double right click over here and under this mesh menu, add say a cylinder. Now if we hold the middle mouse button down and move the mouse, we are rotating around that object. And so something interesting happens if we select more than one object. So if I hold shift and then left click on this cube here, this will add that cube to the selection. Notice they're now both highlighted in orange. So now if I hold my middle mouse button down and rotate, we rotate around an imaginary point that's in the middle of everything we have selected. So notice we're not really focused specifically on either one of the objects, but somewhere in the middle of it. But if we were to click back on the cube, when we hold down middle mouse button, we stay focused on that, or on the cylinder, we stay focused on that. The other way to move around is by panning the screen. So to do that, you hold down shift, and then also hold down the middle mouse button as well. 
And now if you drag the mouse left or right or up or down, it will pan the screen rather than rotating around anything. And finally, we use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and zoom out. If you just slowly rotate the mouse wheel up one or down one, you'll see this is kind of a clunky way to zoom. You can also do a precise zoom by holding down control and then holding down the middle mouse button rather than clicking it and move your mouse up or down. And you can see this is a much smoother way to zoom in and zoom out. So once again, that's hold middle mouse button down to rotate around stuff, hold shift and middle mouse button down to pan the screen, and then use the mouse wheel to scroll in or scroll out to zoom in and out or hold control and hold down the middle mouse button to do a nice precise zoom. And the precise zoom really comes in handy when you're working up really close on an object. Now there are times in Blender where navigating the 3D environment gets a little funky. Usually these issues surround zooming in and out of things. So if that ever happens, you can always reset your view by pressing Shift C. And when you do that, the 3D view gets reset. So when you scroll in or out to zoom or hold Shift and middle mouse button to pan the screen or rotate, everything will work how it is supposed to. Another navigation feature that I use constantly and I highly recommend to you is pressing Alt middle mouse button. And what this will let you do is zoom in and focus in on one particular object. With this cube selected, if I press Alt and click my middle mouse button, this immediately zooms me in on this object. Or if I were to say, select this cylinder up here and I hold Alt and tap middle mouse button, it zooms me right up in on that object and so this is actually a really helpful tool to immediately get close up towards something you want to work on. Once again, that's Alt middle mouse button to do that. So in addition to our sweet Alt middle mouse button zoom thing and our three main methods of navigating the environment, that is holding middle mouse button to rotate, shift middle mouse button to pan, and scrolling in or out to zoom. In addition to all those, we have some keyboard hotkey buttons that help us jump immediately into different views, such as front, back, right, left, and so on. But before I tell you exactly what those are, let's take a look at a full-size desktop keyboard and a regular laptop keyboard so I can explain a few changes that have been made in Sensei format over the default Blender View hotkeys. So I'm going to open up my browser where I have a picture of a full-size desktop keyboard loaded and also a laptop keyboard loaded. The main difference between a laptop keyboard and a full-size desktop keyboard are the numpad keys that are available over to the right on a regular desktop keyboard and are not available on the laptop. So if we click back to the desktop, notice this big block of keys over here, which we don't have on a laptop keyboard, but basically we have everything else. So the thing about Blender is that the view keys, that is the keys that you press to instantly change your 3D view into front, back, top, right, left, and so on, which you will be using constantly when you are modeling and designing things in 3D. Those view keys in Blender default are all located on this numpad. What Blender default uses these regular top number keys that are available both on a desktop keyboard and a laptop keyboard is to control layer visibility in Blender, which we'll get into what layers are in a future video. But basically they don't let you control your view in the way that these numpad keys do. So for instance, if we minimize this and head back into Blender and we deactivate Sensei Format so we can get Blender default back, I'll just come up here and click Deactivate Sensei, then click OK. And when I open Blender back up, now I've got all of Blender's default keys and everything. So if I press the number one on my full-size desktop keyboard on the numpad area, it will change my view to the front view. That is, once again, this key right here, this numpad key. However, if I were to press the number one that is just above between the tab key and the Q key on, on your keyboard towards the top left corner, 
what this actually does is activate or deactivate this layer here, which the first layer is already active in default. But if I were to say, click a different layer here and then press one, this would activate this layer here. And now I can see the cube because the cube is actually located in this layer. So this default keyboard setup is pretty annoying for a lot of people. The first reason being most people don't generally use hotkeys to change which layer they're on that often. It's much easier to see this visual representation of your layers here on the 3D view header menu and just select which layers that you want open or closed. Which then means every time you want to change your view to say top, bottom, front, or right, you have to either A, take your right hand off of your mouse to jump over to press one of these numpad keys, or B, it means you have to move your left hand, which is normally on this area of the keyboard, if for nothing else than because you're using shift or control or alt most of the time while doing stuff. It means you either have to take your right hand off the mouse every time you wanna change view, which you do constantly, or you have to migrate your left hand all the way across the keyboard every time you want to change your view. So this is not really an ideal setup for most people. So not only is this an inefficient use of a regular full-size desktop keyboard, it also means that if you're on a laptop using Blender default, you have no default hotkeys available to control your view. Eventually, Blender realized this and they went ahead and added an option to emulate numpad keys. So if I change this to user preferences and click on input here, there's this option to emulate numpad keys. So this is a pretty helpful option, especially if you are on a laptop, but it's an option that most people, even if they're using a full size desktop keyboard will end up activating after installing Blender for the reasons that I explained about having to constantly migrate your left hand or lift your right hand off the mouse just to change your view, which you do constantly. So maybe it's not great that this isn't on by default in Blender default, but even then it sort of leaves a little bit to be desired. So if we take a look again back at the keyboard, notice that on the numpad keys, there are these additional arrows. So you've got your regular arrows on a default keyboard and also those are usually available on a laptop as well. But then on the numpad keyboard, you have these arrow keys on your eight key, four key, two key, and six key. So when they were figuring out which keys to use for view keys, of course they wanted to allow the arrow keys on this numpad key to be able to rotate your view up and down, left and right with these arrow keys because that's a useful convention. However, once you're using the emulate numpad option to be able to control your view keys with the regular one through zero keys, the placement of these don't really make any sense anymore. There's no initial easy way to remember what keys to press to change to the kind of view you want to be in because those keys were arranged in a weird way to make use of these directional keys on the numpad keyboard. So if I minimize this, and we switch this back to the 3D view. If I press my number six on the numpad keyboard of my full size keyboard here, this will rotate the screen around. So if I press the up arrow key on the numpad key, which is eight, it does this, or the two, which is the down arrow key, it does like this. But anyway, once you have the emulate numpad option activated, those same hotkeys for the numpad keyboard are used for the regular top one through zero keys. However, their order doesn't make a lot of sense. So for instance, if I press one, that sends me into front view. And when I press two, that allows me to rotate. When I press three, it sends me into right view. And when I press four, that allows me to rotate. Five switches between orthographic and perspective views, which perspective is closer to like how a regular human eyes see and ortho, as you can see up here, which is short for orthographic strips your view of perspective and sort of makes everything look flat. And then six, rotates your screen again. Seven, changes to top view. And eight, rotates. Now this is fine for people who have been using Blender for years, 
and have had a lot of time to memorize what all these keys do. But to me, there's no real mnemonic usefulness to this setup. So in Sensei format, a simple mnemonic device was set up to make it easier to remember which hotkey you need to press to change to the view you want to change by default using the top one through zero keys. So it doesn't matter whether you're on a full size desktop keyboard or using a laptop keyboard. To demonstrate how we do things in Sensei format, I'm going to click File, Sensei Format, and click Activate Sensei to get this back. And then when we open up Blender again, we're back in Sensei format. Okay, so whereas in Blender default, if you have the emulate numpad option activated so you can use your regular one through zero keys at the top of your keyboard, whereas those keys are still mapped to the functionality of the view keys that made sense when using the desktop numpad keys, Sensei format instead gives you a simple way of remembering which keys will take you to the view you want to go. So if in Sensei format, if we press one, up at the top left of our keyboard, where the regular one through zero keys are on either a full-size desktop keyboard or a laptop. If we press one, that takes us into front view. And if we press two, that takes you into back view. So if you hit the view key you want, you'll automatically know that the key next to it will do the opposite of that view. So one and two are front and back. Likewise, three and four are left and right. And then five and six are top and bottom. And that covers your main six views. And then you have seven, which will hop you in and out of perspective viewport mode. And then you have eight, which allows you to rotate your screen up and down and nine, which allows you to rotate your screen left and right. Now I rarely ever use eight and nine. However, they can occasionally be useful hotkeys. And then of course, zero will send you into the viewport of your camera, the same as it does with Blender default. So once again, if you're just getting started with this stuff, I recommend if you haven't already, go ahead and click on this view manual button and download this PDF manual because on page, let's see, what was it? It's near the end. On page 16, you have a very helpful hotkey chart which tells you how to do the most common things you'll need to be doing, such as the navigation stuff we've gone over in this video. And for a more complete list of hotkeys, you can also check out this button right here that says View Hotkeys. And this just takes you to a much more complete documentation of the Blender Sensei format hotkeys, which you can also download as well. Do note, however, that if you do have a full-size desktop keyboard, you can still use the numpad keys in Sensei format, such as the right arrow key, which is on the six numpad key to rotate in this direction, the four arrow key to rotate in the opposite direction, eight, which is pointing up, and two, which is pointing down. You still have access to those if you want to use them. And then the only other difference from the Blender default numpad keys is that seven and nine copy the behavior of the one and two keys at the top left of the keyboard because in terms of muscle memory, it's much easier to remember that the one over to the left does front and the one over to the right does back. Likewise with one and three on the numpad keys, one does top and three does bottom. However, it is very rare that I ever use the numpad keys because like I said, it's, it's a really inefficient way to navigate around in Blender. You have to either take your hand off of your mouse, which you don't want to have to do, or you have to move your left hand all the way across the keyboard just to change your view, which like I said, once you get used to using Blender more and more, you're going to realize you'll, you're constantly adjusting your view to get a different angle on something you're working on. So one other thing I would like to mention real quick, you can control your camera view down here in the director's chair area, the same way that you control your regular 3D view. So to rotate, you just hold your middle mouse button down, or you can pan your camera around by holding shift and middle mouse button. You can also zoom in and out by scrolling your mouse wheel or hold control and middle mouse button to do a precise zoom as well as doing an alt middle mouse button zoom by holding alt and tapping your middle mouse button to quickly zoom in on something. You can even use view keys to quickly align your camera. So 
I could press one for front view or two for back, three for left, four for right, five for top, and six for bottom. And this is important to know because if you want to render something in Blender, you have to render it out through what the camera sees. So if I were to press one to change this camera to front view, and I wanted to render this cube, now I would click my render button because whatever the camera sees is what's going to actually be rendered. And there's our very plain, boring front view of this cube here rendered, which we could then save this rendered image out or work on it or whatever. So I'll click go back here. All right, so before we go, let's quickly recap everything we've learned about navigating in Blender. So first of all, to rotate around things, we hold our middle mouse button down and move the mouse. To pan the screen, we hold shift and middle mouse button, and then we can move up or down, left or right. To zoom, the regular clunky way, we can scroll our mouse wheel up or down, and this zooms us in or out. We can also perform a precise zoom by holding control in the middle mouse button. And this is really helpful when you're wanting to work really close up on something and you don't want the sometimes disorienting scroll zoom. See, it's a, it's a big jump between that and that. So sometimes it's nice to be able to use that control middle mouse for the precise zoom. Then you have the alt middle mouse button tap zoom, which quickly gets you close to something for working on it. So if you were to double right click over here and at a UV sphere, we could hold Alt and Top Middle Mouse to quickly zoom in on that, or we could double right click over here and add a cone and hold Alt and Top Middle Mouse button to zoom in on that. And then to jump into either front or back view, we press one for front and two for back. And notice that this now says ortho up here, which is short for orthographic. So all of the regular view keys, that is front, back, left, right, and so on, will immediately put you in an orthographic view. That basically means a view stripped of perspective. Whenever I click on my middle mouse button to then begin rotating around, notice that it says persp, which is short for perspective, because we're immediately thrown back into a view that has perspective, which is a much more natural view, much more similar to the way the human eye perceive things. So we've got one for front, two for back, three for left, four for right, five for top, six for bottom. And normally you won't manually need to switch between orthographic and perspective views, but you can always tap seven real quickly if for some reason you need to do that as well. Okay, so if you're looking for something to do between now and the next video, what I recommend is that you get used to adding things in Blender, which you can do by double right clicking. And under this mesh menu, you can add these different mesh objects. So experiment with adding all this different stuff, you know, maybe kind of see what these shapes look like once you add them to your 3D view. And just practice rotating around things, pressing Alt Middle Mouse button to quickly zoom in on stuff, panning your screen by holding Shift and Middle Mouse button, and getting used to the view hotkeys as well. Okay, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.